why not? Because why would you want it to be more pleasant for everybody? It's like if it's pleasant for everybody, it's pleasant for you. True. But if you're making people miserable, then would you be a little bit? I mean, I guess some people don't care if they make other people miserable. No, I think some people get off on it all the time some too. Some people do. But very, very few, and nobody likes those people anyway. Hi, my name's Ty. Okay. So what I normally do is I set up this little like sign and table in like parks or whatever, and I talk to people about whatever they want to talk about. Oftentimes I'll have like a religious person come up, Christian, Hindu, whatever, and they'll they'll try to like either explain their religion to me or like try to sell me on it. And I just ask questions to see if we can get to the foundation of what they believe. And oftentimes when we get back up from that foundation, they're not as confident in that belief anymore. I'm an atheist and I never really get an opportunity to talk to other atheists. So I thought, let me go to a place where a bunch of atheists would be. Are, are you guys atheists? Yes. You are? Comfortable? With yep. A word and everything? Oh, yeah. I've never done interviews with any atheists before. Would you mind if I asked you some questions about, like, atheists in general? How to comment? What's your personal, like, transition into it? Um, well, I've never been religious. You've I never mean, been religious? No. Ooh. Ooh. What's your name, by the way? Melissa. Melissa. Nice to meet you. I'm Ty. Yeah, I... No, she's just shy. Oh, okay. No, she just, <laughs> she just doesn't talk in front of people very much. <laughs> She's just horribly, horribly shy. Okay, okay. <laughs> What's her name? That's Cece. Cece, it's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. Okay. Uh, I even done a little sign language. My oldest, my oldest is autistic. Yeah? And when she was little, we used to do sign language. Like she didn't talk until she was past three. Oh, So I okay. used to know baby signs. I nice. didn't know real sign language. My mom's deaf. So I used to know more. And more, like cookies yeah. Cookies. Cookies, yeah. It was like, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. It's like I used to know a bunch of ones like that because she didn't talk, but she learned some sign language when she was little. Have you seen the YouTube videos of the sign language, sign language babies? Like there are babies that you can teach sign language. Well, yeah, very, she very did. Young. When she was a baby, she learned a lot of For it. For real, okay. Because she went to daycare too, and they taught a lot of that at daycare. That's incredible. So Melissa, yep, you were never you were never religious. No, my grandparents were. They were Catholic. I grew up in Boston, which okay. everybody's Catholic in Boston. I mean, not everybody, but everybody in my city was, like, Catholic. Okay, okay. But, so I've pretty much been an atheist since I was little. Because I remember, first remember, it, I really realized it when I was, like, in sixth grade or something. And one of the teachers was asking what churches everybody went to. Sure. Which you shouldn't be asking in school anyway, but again, everybody's Catholic, so. Everyone knows. And I was like, yeah. I don't go to church. And everybody's like, <gasps> and I'm like... What's what, the big is that deal? weird? I don't go to church. And then occasionally, my grandmother would talk, my parents into sending us to Sunday school. And we'd go for a few months, and then we'd all get sick of waking up on Sundays. And then we'd stop going to Sunday school. Would you say then that you never had... A lot of the reasons why people are indoctrinated into religion and stay religious, even when they realize that secular secularism kind of makes more logical sense is because they're weighted by like uh, guilt of fear or like sins. I think sins. it's fear and family, just history. If you're raised in it and you're taught, if you don't do this, you're going to hell. Yeah. Well, that's going to scare a kid. I was never raised with that because okay. my parents weren't religious. We lived in the same house as my aunt and uncle. They weren't religious. My cousins weren't religious. So, you know, which is funny because grand my grandmother was. She went to church the day she died. She was like, you know. Do you feel like you missed out on that whole emotional loop or roller coaster that most people yeah, it's like you never deal with it. It just made sense. I'm like, it just why makes would I sense. believe in this? Nobody uh, ever taught me to believe in it. It didn't okay. make any sense. My fastest yeah. questions then, like sure. so some classic so I think people who are like theists theists might be interested in realizing how someone who's never had religion in their life determine what's a good thing from a bad thing or what will happen to them after they die. You wanna just go over some like the basic stuff then? Like well, I mean it's just what's a good action from a bad action? How do you determine it's that? the greater good. The greater good. It's not even a personal good. It's what's good for the greater society, which I think people have gotten away from. Okay. Everybody's about what I want, what's best for me. And it's like, no, it's what's best for everybody. Could you give me an example? It's a... I'm going to take a good example. Use food as an example. That's always good. Why would food be an example? I don't know. So I like forgot your name. No, no, it's, like, it's like, yeah, you know, I'd like to keep more of my money. But okay. I'd rather pay more taxes if it's going to make more people, if it's going to be benefit more people as universal health care. It's like, yes, I make more money than a lot of people. So you're Take saying, more of my money for taxes and make life better for everybody. You're saying you prefer to have more people be healthy than sick. Therefore, yeah. if I can pay a little bit of taxes to keep that... And it helps everybody, yeah, that's better. Can I throw something out at you? And I'm, I, and like I say, I'm, I'm an atheist too. I just like to like challenge the ideas. And let me know if I'm taking too far. But... Um, there are people right now who need a kidney. 
I imagine you have two kidneys right now. I signed up to be a donor. I've never been matched with anybody. But you don't need two right now. No. You could give up one right now and give it to someone. Would you I make could. that a law? I mean, that I wouldn't make it a law. Kidney? I mean, something like that, that, that comes down <laughs> to you could be personally really hurt by having that surgery. Mm. And yeah, that could help somebody else. It could save their lives. It could, but I think that's taking it too far as far as personal liberty. Okay, so there's... Ah. There's, there's personal liberty, like, you are in control of your own body. Nobody can tell you what to do with your body. I like that. So you value things that are not just necessarily good for the Commonwealth, but also personal things as well. Yeah. Personal gonna, property, that personal could hurt liberty. You. Like, sure. Yes, having less property could hurt you in a way like, oh, I have less fun, but it's like, it's not hurting you your whole life. Whereas you having a kidney coming out, you could have a complication that could destroy your life. Sure, but don't I also have a right to my own body parts and what I decide yeah. to do with them? Yeah, because that's your body. Yeah, it's my own body. I should it's be like, part of your body. Yeah, you need one, but this but is mine. But stuff is stuff, body is body. Or like, like, how do I put it? Um, my house is my house. Yes, people can live here, but this is my house. But on the other hand, be... you don't need that house. True, I mean... but it's the same. Is it? Will, will we say it's also valuable as a personal liberty for someone to say, "This is my thing." I am aware that you don't. I can help you financially with that as part of like my on income. Some level. But okay, so there's a there's, there's a, like a limit. Give and take. Yeah, you have to find that limit of what you're comfortable with. And okay. like, yes, your personal body, it's like pain and whatever. What if there was one big like, god that could just say, here's your, here's the list. This is the list of personal rights that you have. I'm perfect. Deal with it. Yeah, but I don't think there would be. If their god came down and said that and they actually could prove his power, then right. I'd be like, all right, I was wrong. Are you saying you'd but, rather have a system where people can work out the limits yeah, amongst I mean, themselves? Yeah, which is part of democracy. It's like you have to kind of work out the limits of what is and isn't, which is why taxes. It's like, yes, pay more taxes to a point, but at some point, you know, mm. you have to give people incentives to earn more and okay. do stuff. But then well, at some point, like, you have people with a billion dollars that inherit it. Like, sure. what's their motivation to do anything? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, that's where it comes down to. You have to figure out where the middle ground is. So it's important to develop a social contract with people yeah, and, it's and like talk things out. you live in a society. Yes. And the thing is, I think people don't understand is if you contribute to society and you're helping the lower, the less educated become more, you're helping society in general. Like, people talk about crime, they don't want crime. Well, what causes crime? People that have no hope. Mm -hmm. If you're not helping them have hope, you're going to get more crime. Okay. And it's like, do you want to live in a society that's completely segregated where you're scared to go in certain areas because of crime? What like, did you say? Religion gets people hope? But I don't think people follow the religion the way they even say they do. Like, you know, people aren't very Christ-like, you know. You don't see all the Christians giving all their money to the poor and helping. I mean, some of them do. I mean, I know people that are and do follow that, but I know a lot of people that are hypocritical. Mm. And yeah, religion may give them hope, but it's like, it's like the book you want and stuff in that Bible that you're supposed to follow. It's like, that's questionable. Mm. Why don't you have hope in other people and do stuff for other people? So you're not just saying hope generally. You're saying hope in other people. Well, is yeah, it's like you have to necessary. work together. A book is not going to solve your problem. Community, like building yeah. community, social aspects. That's more fundamental than just having hope. Yeah. Okay, okay. One last question? Sure. What happens to you when you die? Aren't you scared? Aren't you're you terrified? Gone. Well, the thing is, you're just gone. What? You're, you're just saying you live and that's it? How that's dare it. you? And once you're dead, what do you care? You're dead. You don't know anything anymore. It's like, yeah, the, as, as you're living personally, it's kind of scary. I'm not here anymore, but it's like, sure. I wasn't here for billions of years. I won't be here for billions of years after. You know what's terrifying to me is living literally forever, never being able to die, because then everything around me loses value because I know it'll always be there or like have some sort of experience of stimuli there. And it'll be like, the fact that it's limited and temporary is what gives it value, and that's what I find beautiful behind a short-term life. And, and it's not so much that I know I won't be here, it's just I don't know what happens after I'm dead. Nothing. Until I have better evidence for it. I just think you just don't exist anymore. You Probably, don't care because yeah. you don't exist. Yeah, at that point, who knows what it's happens. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a better thing than uh, worrying about going to hell anyway. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you're just dead. Like, it's like going to sleep. Okay. You don't know what happens when you're asleep. You're just asleep and then you're just gone. If, you, if, if your impression is you're dead once you're dead, do you think there's any sort of like inherent justice in the universe? And no. does that make you not feel good about how the universe was put into place or anything like that? I think it just is what it is. It's like, <laughs> you know, try and be a good person, be nice to other people, make their lives better. Okay. And, you know, live until you're dead. To what end? Why not? Because why would you want it to be more pleasant for everybody? 
it's like if it's pleasant for everybody, it's pleasant for you. True. But if you're making people miserable, then would you be a little bit? I mean, I guess some people don't care if they make other people miserable. No, I think some people get off on it all the time some too. Some people do. But very, very few, and nobody likes those people anyway. Yeah. They are living in their own hell, just being themselves. I think most people just want to make, you know. Yeah. But then people get caught up in their own happiness and ignore other people. Which That's, That's very true. So it's always a limit. Yeah. One last question. Sure. How, like, I guess, and I normally ask this question at the beginning, but like, say from a scale from like zero to 100%, as far as confidence goes, how confident are you that no God exists? I would say about 99%. That's a perfect answer, I think. I just, only in a sense of you're not absolute. You can't be absolute on everything. Very good. I don't know everything absolutely. Very good. I'm not that smart. <laughs> hey, that was a great chat. Cece, it was nice to meet you. Cece, you sign language. We need to talk to people. Thank you so much for that chat. I really appreciate it.